National Lampoon's Vacation movie review. So like the previous movie I reviewed, this is another movie that I happened to see just because they were selling it for a dollar at my local DVD rental store. Uh, but this is a movie I really should have seen ages ago. Th this movie was big in the 1980s when I was growing up. Uh, most of my friends or classmates had already seen it. Uh, I'm, yeah, I can't believe it took me this long to see it, but here we are with the review. Um, just kind of a brief note, this, this is a movie about a road trip across the United States. I was in Japan at the time I watched this, although I've since been living in a number of countries, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia. Um, and for anybody who's been abroad maybe, uh, you, you may realize that a lot of countries are not as big as the U.S. So uh, the idea of just getting on the expressway and traveling for days and still being within a single country uh, is, is somewhat unique. I mean, there are other countries like this, you know, Australia or Russia or China or something like that. But there, there are another, a number of countries that are not like this. Uh, you know, in Vietnam or Cambodia, you can't just travel on the expressway for days. Uh, Bill Bryson actually makes the same point in his book, The Lost Continent, when he compares America to Europe. Uh, <clears throat> Lost Continent, a book I reviewed on this channel previously. So anyways, when I was in Asia watching this movie, it did make me nostalgic for some of the childhood road trips we did as a family. Now, <clears throat> it's somewhat of a generational thing because uh, my parents, when they were younger, uh, when they went on summer vacation, they piled into my grandpa's car and they really did drive all over the country. I, I think my mom's family especially. Uh, me, when I was a kid, uh, if we were going to Colorado or California or something like that, we, or Florida, uh, we would take an airplane, which I, I think is a generational difference. Um, you, you know, maybe I was a spoiled middle class child but I, I think there is some generational differences going on here. Now this movie, even though it came out in 1983, is looking backwards to 1950s, uh, or I, I think it's based off of a story which came from the 1950s, or something like that. The, the setting is not explicitly 1950s. Uh, that being said though, I do have some memories of being in the car for long hours as a kid. Uh, even just, you know, traveling around the Midwest, like driving from Michigan up to Minnesota, which yeah, it took like a day or a day and a half or something like that. So, the, you know, the, the long stretches of the American Midwest where you're just in the car for hours and all you can see is corn and corn and corn. That's a childhood memory for me. Uh, that's definitely in this movie. Uh, the cheesy tourist stops along the way. Uh, again, another childhood movie, which is definitely in this movie. The fighting among the siblings in the back seat. Yeah, that's another childhood movie. Sorry, another childhood memory, which is in this movie. Uh, the f arguments over the music, etc. cetera. Uh, and yet, all that being said, this is not a children's movie. There are a number of adult themes and situations in this movie. There is profanity, nudity, drug use, masturbation jokes, scatological jokes, sexual situations, uh, and even incest jokes, uh, and a lot of black humor. Not all of the characters survive, and the dog gets a particularly gruesome death, uh, albeit it's off camera. Now, by today's standards, this is nothing new. I mean, Family Guy in South Park, I think, have made, a, made whole careers out of juxtaposing kind of childhood innocence uh, against adult situations. I was a little bit surprised uh, that this film was all the way back from 1983, although maybe I shouldn't have been, because I think, somebody maybe correct me uh, if I'm wrong, I think there was a period in the late 70s, early 80s, where a lot of these more risque movies came out before the more conservative backlash uh, came in against that. So I, maybe this movie just got in on that window uh, with, with a lot of those other risque movies from the early 80s. <clears throat> 
But yeah, definitely, I can I can understand why I never saw this movie as a child. You, you know, when I first printed it, I thought, 1983, why did I never get around to seeing this movie in the 80s? And then when I'm watching it, I'm like, ah, yes. That's why my parents never let me watch this movie. Okay. Um, certainly as an adult, though, I'm old enough to, to handle it. Uh, this was a hugely successful movie at the time and spawned so many sequels, which I've not seen, but which I'm familiar with because it's just a part of the culture, isn't it? I was surprised, though, because this movie, honestly, wasn't all that funny. Uh, it was mildly amusing, it was a pleasant waste of time, but it wasn't laugh out loud hilarious by any means. I'm a bit surprised that it became such a cult favorite. Although maybe again, maybe I was just mentioning um, all the adult humor mixed in with the childhood situations. Maybe that made a big impression on the audience at the time. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, all in all, uh, you've probably already seen this movie before because this is a huge classic. Unless, I don't know, do, do kids still watch this movie or is this something only old people talk about now? Uh, but if you haven't already seen it, uh, I wouldn't recommend you go out of your way to track it down. But if it's ever on TV, it's, it's a pleasant enough waste of time.